Hello, everyone. Welcome to this lesson, which we are going to discuss about the basics of employment contracts. Rakia Givisumvala, Mula Dharma Sambanding Tamai, Adapi, Ape Padam, Iganagandiane, our lesson is about the basics of employment contracts. Now, this is one of the last lecture topics in your legal environment course for this entire semester. This is one of the last lecture topics and it will also be tested in your examination. So make sure to listen attentively to this recording. And if you have any questions, please ask any of our lecturers uh, for any clarifications. We will be available uh, during, this, um, during this week and even after this week for answering any of your questions. Okay, having said that, we can now start the uh, lecture. Like I said before, the lesson is about the basics of employment contracts. Now, in the name itself, you can see that it is called an employment contract. Rakia Givisumak. What does that mean? That means it is a special contract. Now, you learned about the general law of contract. And then you also learned several special contracts. Vishesh Givisum. Varga Kipayak. Ogulang Ignagatta. Examples for such special contracts are the sale of goods contract, partnerships, insurance contracts. So just like those contracts, another type of special contract is an employment contract. Now, like I have said many times before, what is a special contract? The same law which applies to general contracts apply to special contracts as well. But in addition to that, in addition to that, there is a special law that regulates special contracts. Vishesha niti akin. Tamai meva palane vetni. So, employment contracts are also one type of special contracts. Now, before I start the lesson, I want to clarify that there are two main sectors of employment in Sri Lanka. There are two main sectors of employment. What are these two main sectors? Very easy. The government sector and the private sector. Okay. If I say it in any, uh, if I say it in another way, employees in Sri Lanka can be broadly classified into two sectors. Government sector employees, Raja Sevakyan, and mm -hmm. private sector employees, Putkalika Anshe Sevakyan. Now, remember carefully, employment contracts are only applicable to private sector employees. How can you say that with the employment contracts are given to you? Then you can ask a question, what about government sector employees? Aren't they governed by any laws? Are there any laws which are applicable to employees who are working in the government sector? The answer is yes, there are laws, but they are a special kind of law. Why do I say that? If there is an employee in a government sector, Raj Anshay Sevakek Innavanang, Eyaata, Eyaara Akiyava Baragan Avasthavedi, Eyaara Denne Pat Vime Lidhyak. If there is an employee in the government sector, when he starts employment, he is given a letter of appointment. So the terms and conditions of his employment are there in this letter. It is a letter. And the law that applies to him or her is under the establishment code. Singling up again, Ayatana Sangrahaye Thiyena Neeti Reeti Varatana Kolavatamai Me Raja Anshe Sevakya Palaneya Vinni the laws and the regulations which are listed under the establishment code are applicable to employees in the government sector. Right. What we are going to discuss under employment contracts, Rakia Givisum Yatate, Api discuss Karanne, Pudgalika Anshe, Sevakyanta Adalavena, Neetin Sambandayan. The laws which are applicable to employees in the private sector. Now, remember I told you, employees in the public sector are given only a letter of appointment. 
but employees in the private sector are given a contract of employment a contract of employment rakia givi sumaktamai pudgalika anshe sevakante labinni now in any contract just like in any other contract there should be at least two parties parshava dekak abuma vashen orama givi sumaka sitiya yutui so in the same way even in an employment contract there should be two parties now who are the two parties in an employment contract it's very easy on one side we have the employer seva yojakaya the employer and on the other side we have the employee sevakaya on one side we have the employer on the other side we have the employee who is an employer seva yojakaya kiyana kawuda an employee is a person who receives a service from an employee receives a service from an employee then who is the employee the employee is the person who provides that service a seva laba dena kena tamai sevaka ek kela kiyanne the contract or the employment contract is between these two parties who are the two parties the employer and the employee now listen carefully in this contract of employment who has the bigger bargaining power bargaining power kiyanne mokadda keval kirime balaya who is more powerful in this contract between the employer and the employee obviously the employer is going to be more powerful boss kenek ta vadipura balaya tiyenawa eyage sevake ekwa palane karanna this imbalance me asamathurita bhave nisa samaharak pilawata sevakeyata prashna athi wenna puluwan nattam asadharanayak athi wenna puluwan because of this inequality there can be some unfairness right that happens to the employee me unfairness ek this unfairness is minimized because of the law we call these laws employment laws or labor laws kam karu niti so the law exists to protect the employee from any unfair activity done by the employer right it exists mainly to protect the employee right and to ensure their well being sevakyange yaha pavatma sanata kirima sadaha tamai labor law or employment law ekak thiyenne okay now i told you there are two parties in a contract of employment now when an employee is taken to work sevake pudgalikanshe veda baragaddi eya me givisuma atsan karanawa they sign this contract and from that day onwards there is a contract between the employer and the employee now just like every other contract me givisuma yatate parshavayanta aitivasikam ha vagakim labenawa just like every other contract parties have respective rights and obligations arising from the contract what is the obligation of the employer seva yojakaya tina vagakima thamai sevakaya sapena seve sandaha gevi makran the obligation of the employer is to provide a salary or a payment for the services of the employee then what is the obligation of the employee sevakaya ge vaga kiwa mokadda tamata pavarena karya elesama hariyata itu karanna the obligation of the employee is to fulfill his task or his job correctly and in return for that a salary is paid by the employer that buck given on seva yojakaya visin so these are the rights and obligations that these two parties get under a contract of employment there are two main types of contracts of employment right if you look at the slide you can see there are two main types of contracts of employment the first type is contract of service api singhalen kiyenawa seva givisumak kiyala a contract 
of service. The other type is called a contract for service. Seva sandaha vana givisumak. Contract of service, seva givisumak. Contract for service, seva sandaha vana givisumak. Now remember carefully, contract of service ekaka inne employee kenek, seva ka yek. Hari. Contract of service, there is an employee. Then who is there in a contract for service? There is, we call them independent contractor. Swadhina givisum karuvek. Abhi yegulan kiyane, swadhina givisum karuvan kiyala. Now these two pictures are very important for you to understand the difference between an employee and an independent contractor. Sevake ka swadhina givisum karuvek atharati venasa terungane. May pin to Radeka, Kodak, Vadagat Venava. Who is an employee? Look at the employee part. The easiest way to identify an employee is that he is or he or she is being controlled a lot by the employer. Seva Yojkaya Visin, Daddy has a palanator lakvena kinitamai, Seva Kayak Kiani. Generally, employees are considered as permanent workers of a company. If I move on to independent contractors, who is an independent contractor? Think of it this way. If a company outsources something to another company, a outsource karana company eka independent contractor kene kwenava, he becomes an independent contractor. Swadhina divisum karuek venava. Now I will explain the difference very clearly from these two pictures. Look at the employee part. Look at the employee part. What can you see? There are two employees. Sevake o denek innava. Egolange piti pase nirantaren thamatissima. Egolange boss innava. The employer is behind them. And you can see the workplace. Workplace. Megolo vadakaran ne kohedan. Megolange ma. Sorry. Megolo vadakaran ne kohedan. Office eke. They work in an office. You can see in the first picture, there is a laptop, there is a desk, right? Piti passe, there is a photocopy machine. And you can see there is a calendar. And you can also see there is a punch, punch card machine. What is a punch card machine? Like in some companies, punch card machine, it records the time which you Come to work and which you leave work. Mama Bandata, what Namaya Tunata? Mama Magi card de Karagana, a machine nekata danava. It's got Namaya Tuna, Kin Vedava, a machine neke, record venava. Mang Vada, Arala, Gedrigio, Pahai Kalata. Then I punch my card again and Pahai Kala Kela, record venava. So this records the time that you go to work and you leave work, right? And all of this work happens inside an office. And your boss is right behind you. That is an employee. Seva kayak. Then look at the other side. Look at the left side. Independent contractor. The name itself says that they are independent. Egolo swadhi nai. Egolange piti passing. Kaurwat boss kene khita gena na. Where does their independent contractor work? They work in their own house, right? Tamagema gedara vadakaranne. What does that mean? They have so much freedom. They have so much freedom, right? Tamagema gedara ona mandumak. And again, you can see in the first picture, there is a cat next to that person. You can gedara suratalueka, suratalueka. They are enjoying their work at home, right? So it doesn't matter where an independent contractor works or what are the work hours. Payagan, koheda vadakarane, e kisima deyak adala ne, adala venne eka deyai, e golant pavarona vade, e golo karana vata net the kiya neka vitarai. Okay? Only one thing is relevant whether they are actually conducting the work that is done to them or not. Now I have a clarification to make. 
don't confuse work from home with an independent contract okay now after the covid 19 pandemic lot, most of the companies had travel restrictions sansarana seema tibba eka nisa most people couldn't go to work right but working from home tama gedara wala karana paliyatama tama independent contractor kenek wenne na okay you won't become an independent contractor just because you work from home there are many factors to consider whether a person is actually an employee or an independent contractor i will explain this with an example and then we'll go to discuss the features of a contract for service that is where there is an independent contractor and a contract of service where there is an employee right so a contract of service is an ongoing work relationship ongoing work relationship usually it is long term right a contract for service is where a contractor is hired to to do a specific job only to do a specific job only i will explain this with an example now think there is an accountancy firm okay there is an accountancy firm there are many employees who work in this accountancy firm may accountancy firm age vada karana sevakayo godak innawa examples for those employees are obviously there are accountants there are bookkeepers there are executives and there are bosses like the cfo ceo so on and so forth these are the employees of this accounting firm why do we call them employees there is an ongoing work relationship between these people and the accounting firm and they are controlled by their boss egolange hama tissema egolange seva yojakeyage palanayata yatak ve inne dadi palanayata yatak ve inne now let's say that this accountancy firm needs to develop a new software needs to develop a new software to record accounting transactions okay to record accounting transactions they need a new software me company ke accountants wala to software ekak develop karanna denuma ne ni so what do they do they hire the services of a software development company right basically they outsource this project to a software development company for example in sri lanka there are software development companies software companies like cisco labs or wso2 e wage company ekata outsource karana when you outsource this that software company becomes an independent contractor why they are hired to do a specific job only right to do a specific job only what is the specific job to make this accountancy software right so remember very carefully independent contractors do only a specific job but employees they are ongoing working in the employment relationship or with the employer yeah right so independent contractors name em thiyenawa they are employed under a contract kontraktuwak nattam gibisumaka padanamak mata thamai megulanga seweta bandawa ganne eken adahas karanne naha employee ta gibisumak naha kiyala but we will see later they are only taken to work for a specific job under a specific contract right another example now the first example is the accounting firm wants to develop a new software so they are giving the work to an in a software development firm that becomes an independent contractor the other example is this accounting firm megulange building ekak megulange wada karana building ekak poddak abalang vela thiyenne right their building is a bit old now and they want to renovate this megulanta me building ekak alut padiya karanna one what do they do they outsource this to a construction company right they outsource this to a construction company then this construction company becomes an independent contractor this construction company becomes an independent contractor right 
Now we'll briefly read the differences between a contract of service and a contract for service. Remember, a contract of service is between an employer and an employee. Seva yoja kek ha, seva kek. Athar, tiene a contract of service. A contract for service is between a contractor and a client. Make a num deka kondak penasano in a contract for service. There is a contractor and a client. For example, in that story about the accounting firm wanting to develop a new software, the contractor becomes the software company. Contractor, contractor, then ne kaata the software company kaata. The client becomes the accounting firm. Software, the product of the software company is given to the client. That is the accounting firm. If the accounting firm wants to renovate the building. They give the contract to a construction company. And once again, the client is the accounting firm. I hope you understood the difference. Right. Now we'll briefly discuss the differences between a contract of service and a contract for service. So the most important, the most basic difference is the amount of control. The worker or the employee is controlled by their employer and they should do their job according to their job description. You can see the employer is always behind the employee and looking at how they are doing their job. On the other side, we can see a contractor is significantly more independent, very much more independent. What does he have to do? The only responsibility he has to do is to supply the services according to the contract schedule specification. Contract eke tiyana vade karanna vitarai. E vade karanna kohomada. Eka karanna paya kiya gada karanna onada. E vade karanna kohada. Nothing matters. The only thing is to ensure that the job is done. If the accountancy firm needs a new software, e software engineer vade karanna kohada. The only thing which matters is that the developed software is ready to be given to the accountancy firm. We go to the next side, contract of service. The worker is expected to work at a specific place during specific hours on specific days. Very easy. Specific place. You have to go to the office. Specific hours and specific days. I told you there is a punching uh, card system to record the hours which you come to work or not. Some companies have the fingerprint system. Right? To see if the employee has worked for the required hours or not. Even when you are working from home, if there is a contract of service, you are required to work those specific hours, right? Now, because COVID is over, lots of companies have started physical work, right? Ayat are work from home, then Ayat physical work, companies, right? So, just because an employee is working from home doesn't mean he is an independent contractor, right? Remember that carefully. Specific place, specific cover, specific days, a kissima dayak, contract for service, nothing is relevant. Remember, the only thing that matters is that your project is done. Right. Other side, third point, the worker must present themselves for work and can't send a substitute. What is the logic behind this? You are hired by the company based on your talent and your skill and your ability. Because of that, you can't send a substitute, right? On the other hand, right, in a contract for service, an independent contractor can send a substitute. Substitute can Client done it. The client doesn't know whether this work was actually done by the contractor or a substitute. Why doesn't the client know? 
they are not behind the independent contractor. Piti passing in na hema dayak mo balagir. The only thing that matters is the project which is done. Okay. Next side, fourth point, contract of service. Employees have statutory rights. Neetiya magi nebala ta iti vasikam dira tiyanava. For holidays, sick pay, maternity and paternity rights, redundancy payments and additional benefits like EPF, ETF, gratuity, paritoshite, evage, additional benefits and statutory rights. Me hama de akma iti vasikam. Se evaka iti vasikam himi vanne only to employees, right? Seva ke anta pamanai, seva ka aiti vasika, labor rights and statutory rights are given not to independent contractors. They don't have any rights, okay? For example, accountancy firm mega kata software ka khadana wana, e software ka khadana employees laghe EPF ka panna bae, right? The accountancy firm doesn't have to pay EPF for the software engineers who are doing that work, right? Why? They are not a part of the company. That is the reason for that. They are not a part of the company. Okay. Next one. Employees are not personally liable for any errors. Usually, employees are not personally liable. Employers are the people who become liable. In law, we call this the concept of vicarious liability. Vicarious liability. What does vicarious liability mean? The employee is not directly liable. Indirectly, the employer is only liable for the errors of the employee or the worker. Right. Okay. Anit pattati yanava. For independent contractors, they will obviously be personally liable. Software company ka hadapu software ke loku defect ka tinawa. Right? If there is a big defect, then that software company and the software engineer who handled that section will be personally liable. Right? And the final point is the work performed is closely connected to the purpose of the business. If it is an accountancy firm, the employees of an accountancy firm are accountants. They do the main job of the business. Then what do independent contractors do? They do supporting jobs like make a software, renovate the building, clean, cleaning purposes, right? They do only supporting functions. They don't do the main purpose of the business. They don't do the main job in a business, right? So those are the main differences between a contract of service and a contract for service. Please try to remember at least a few of those differences, right? Now, there are some tests. What are these tests there for? To see whether an employee is actually an employee or an independent contractor. Seva kreek, atthirma seva kreek na. The, natham, mea atthirma swadhina, givisum karuek na, the kiyaneka thira nekaran na. Harikshana kihi peyakti na. There are several tests to see whether a worker is an employee or an independent contractor. Now, why is this difference important? Why is this difference important? Because the rights of that worker change. And it depends on whether that person is actually an employee or an independent contractor. I discussed previously as well, employees have statutory rights and benefits of work. Rights and benefits. Make isi madayak independent contractor connector nai. Because they have statutory rights, it's very important to classify whether a person who is working in a company is working as an employee or as an independent contractor. May thirane ganna, there are different tests. So we are going to briefly st study these four different tests. That's the control test, test of equipment, upakarana. Integral test, economic reality test. And finally, there is one more test called the multiple test. What is the multiple test? It combines all of these tests. Now listen carefully. These tests were developed by the common law. English common law. What is English common law? Mostly, mostly based on, they are based on judge-made decisions. 
right adhikarana theendumagin kalayakthi sedamai me parikshana me testika nirmane vela thiyenne right the first test is the control test padana parikshana control test this is very easy to understand if the employer or the boss controls the employee right if the boss controls the worker a lot if there is a high degree of control then it is a contract of services there another if there is a boss who controls the worker a lot then that relationship is a contract of services that person is an employee if there is a low level of control that person is an independent contractor i hope you remember the pictures i put to see the difference between an employee and an independent contractor employee ke piti passing hama thisama boss innava the boss controls what the employee does how they do it when and where they do the job look at the slide the first paragraph the employer can control what the employee does how when and where the employee does the job the employee sorry the employer is always behind the employee so if there is a high degree of control it is an employee if there is a low degree of control very little control then that person becomes an independent contractor becomes an independent contractor e argument nidahase independent ly free vidihata ya vade karana but there is a problem with this control test the control test is the most basic test right meka thama issalam api hadagatta test ekak habai make it practically there are some problems look at this orange box it says the story about an airline pilot now an airline pilot is an employee of that airline company ya yeah, sevaka ek he is not an independent contractor but you can't really say it that the airline controls the pilot's activities right the pilot has a lot of independence to do his work but you can't really say that the airline controls the activities so what i'm trying to say is the control test is not a 100% correct test to be used control test ekak vitarak pavichu karala apita thirane ekata ena menna baha whether a person is an employee or an independent contractor so you can read these cases meva mataka tiya ganna ona just remember the summary of these or the main points of these two cases now we are moving to the next test the test of equipment upakarana pilimada parikshana ya this is also very easy if the person employed brings all the equipment related to work then such person is an independent contractor if the equipment is provided by the employer then he is an employee pudgale badakarana sthaneta tamagema upakarana genama na if he brings all his equipment and all his resources then he is an independent contractor if all the equipment and the resources are provided by the boss then that person is an employee right if there is an accountancy firm for example if we have alwood an accountancy firm accountants are employees right they are given computers or laptops from the firm even on the last in a workspace ka kam bana there is a nice desk with a nice chair and there are cupboards to uh, store the records right they are given facilities like bathroom facilities canteen facilities all of those are provided by the employer of the accounting firm if you take the software engineer or a construction worker right now to renovate the accountancy firm there are construction workers their equipment is not provided by the accountancy firm hari api the building ekak रेनोवेट करोनेटिंग 
Okay, next one is called the integral test. Integral test. Antar grahanam, right? Integral test means whether an, a person is a part and parcel of an organization. Making a person a lamai, may put the latter aethane samgatiana bendima, daddy bendima, natta hima, daddy bendima, natta kiela, right? If a person is part and parcel of the organization, and if they are doing something relating to the main purpose of the organization, then they are an employee, right? They are an employee. If they are doing only something supporting, we say something ancillary to the main purpose, right? Unahari, supporting work they become an independent contractor. Once again, accounting firm accountants, they are a part and parcel of that organization. They are in charge of all the accounting services. They do the main purpose of the organization. But independent contractors like software developers or even construction workers, they only provide supporting services to the accountancy firm. They are not part and parcel of the company. They are only something like an external party. And that is the integral test, right? If you look at this picture also, you can see if they are a part and parcel, if what they are doing is an integral or an important, a main purpose of the business, then they are considered to be employees. Economic reality test. Artika yatartavadi parikshana economic reality test this means economic benefit if the person works for another person then he is an employee economic benefit in reality if it goes to our boss then we are employees if the economic benefit actually comes to us itself, then we are an independent contractor. I will give you an example. Now there are architects, right? Architects are in our vast vidya. What do architects do? They make plans to make houses or to make buildings. They make plans. There are architecture firms in Sri Lanka. Architecture firms in Sri Lanka. Then he told Mama architect Kela. I have two career options. I have two career options. Number one is I can join an architect firm. But architect firm me kaka join me na pulu A firm me ke boss ta ina vada. Mata dena ma samharak vada tika. Mama eka karano. Okay. Eto kote boss ta ina saldi tika ing kote saap mata dena ma. Matai firm ke vada karan anuttaya tai. Who am I? I am an employee of that architecture firm. Let's say that I don't join any architecture firm. Mama thaniyam mage business seka patanganava. I start a business on my own. Right? Then what happens? Mata clients la awa. Mange kolangi vada karala. Deno ay kolangi geval. Ha deno ay kolangi businesses. Vada buildings ha dala deno I do my own job. Right? Mage clients la mate sali denava. Who am I? I am an independent contractor. Right? So an architect who joins a firm works for the boss of the firm. The economic benefit goes to the boss. But if I am an independent contractor, I do my own work. Mata sali ham venava. Mage evil pratilabe mama vitrak ganava. The economic reality goes to me. Then I am an independent contractor. Now the slide says the economic reality test consists of the following five factors. You can read these. May five factors. May harunu pahamata padanam velata mai at the time employee connect the independent contractor connect the kyanega tirane venni. Right. And the final test is called the multiple test. I told you. Multiple test develop une. The multiple test was developed because of the weaknesses in the first four tests. The reason behind this is children, right? Eka test king, decide 
whether a person is actually an employee or an independent contractor, because this is a very complicated process. What is the multiple test? May hammer test take up my combined karala. May hammer test take again my kyan and mokad kinekamata padanam vidata mai, tirane gani. The multiple test combines all the previous four tests and comes to the conclusion whether a worker is actually an employee or an independent contractor, right? So it combines all the four tests, the control test, equipment test, integration test, and the economic reality test. That is why it's called the multiple test. Okay, we are moving to the next section. We discussed about contracts of services and contracts for services and the difference between these two, right? Who is an employee and who is an independent contractor. Now we are going to discuss a very important area about the types of employment or the types of contracts of services. So listen carefully. Now we are only going to talk about contracts of services. Seva givisum gana mitrai kata krane anni. Megan passi. All of these are contracts of services. What is a contract of service? It is a relationship between an employee and an employer. Right? That's why we are telling this is types of employment, not types of independent contractors. Okay? So now we are discussing only about contracts of services. That means the relationship between an employee and an employer. This is a very important area will be tested in your exam, so listen carefully. Why is it different? Uh, why is it important to classify types of employment? Why is it different? Why is it important? Because the rights of employees Sevakeyange aitivasikam me egulange sevak e bargi karane mata venas vena nisa. The rights of the employees depend on this classification of employees. That means the different employees which are listed here, right? They have different rights and different obligations, right? So it is very important to identify which type of employee. Is there in a company? Okay, the may have a save a cake to me. The end, when when who I the basic come the rights are different, right? That is what he said in this paragraph because these types, uh, these types depend on the obligations owed by the employers towards their employees, right? Employee can get right to get an employer can get obligation a cup, a right of an employee. Is an obligation of an employer. I think employer connected seva yoga connected may be with the employees later. The na aiti vasikam egolang sorry be with be with the seva ke an sambandhe the na vagakin venas venava. That is why the types of employment is important. So there are different types of employees. If you look at the slide, you can see there are probationers, hari vasikaya, temporary employment. Thavakalika sevakyan. Apprentices. Adunikayan. Fixed term contracts. Then casual employees. And then seasonal. Irtumaya sevakyan. Seasonal employees. So we are going to discuss each of these one by one. First of all, we are discussing about probationary employees. Parivasikyan. Probationers. The first thing you have to remember about a probationer is that a probationer is a permanent employee. Samaning probationer kiwama api godak kakti hitanne that they are not permanent employees. Api hitanne egalu sthira sevakayan kiyala. But that is wrong. Okay? The first thing you have to remember about a probationer is that they are permanent employees. Right? What is a permanent employee? A permanent employee has a contract of employment with the employer. Have I? But these permanent employees are subject to what we call a probationary period. Right? 
ஹரிவாச காலசீமாவுக்கிட்ட மெகுலாங்க யட்டத் வினவ யூஸ்வலி ப்ரொபேஷனரி பீரியட்ஸ் ஆர் லைக் சிக்ஸ் மந்த்ஸ் நைன் மந்த்ஸ் ஆர் ஒன் இயர் ஒன் அண்ட் ஹாஃப் இயர்ஸ் எவகே நிஷித கால சீமாவுக்கிட்ட யட்டத்துவ தீஸ் பீப்பிள் ஆர் பிகமிங் ப்ரொபேஷனரி எம்ப்ளாயீஸ் பட் தே ஆர் பெர்மனன்ட் எம்ப்ளாயீஸ் ஸ்திர சேவகியான் அம்பின ஹெம நிர்ணயக்கரணத்தமை மே பரிவாச கால சீமாக்கிரியடுக்கு to see if this employee is actually suitable for this job when this probationary period comes to an end me parivasa kala seema avasana nata passe if it is 6 months 9 months whatever one year if it comes to an end if the boss is happy with the work of the probationer then we call them we call it that they will confirm the employment of the probationer right tahavuru karanwa confirm the employment of the probationer if the boss is satisfied if the boss is not satisfied right probationary period ekak athulata nattang eka avasan unata passe kiyanna puluwang i'm sorry we don't need you for the company you can go now right you can terminate the services of the employee if the boss is not satisfied right but remember very carefully the probationer is a permanent employee of the company permanent employee and during this probationary period the probationer will be trained and guided about about the company at a training ekak denawa ite passe eya me rasawata attarama sudusu idenatta kiyana eka thirunaya karanawa and at the end of the probationary period if the boss is satisfied if the employer is satisfied with the probationer's work then they will confirm the employee right usually probation is there to assess the skills of the employee usually right habai meka magin employee ta nattang sevakaya ta chance ekak hambena mama attatama me company ke weda karanna kemathi ida kiyana eka thirane karanna even the employee or the worker can get a chance to assess or to decide whether or not he or she likes to continue working in this company right i think the patterma may thirane ganna puluwa the boss can decide whether they want this employee to be in the company right or the worker can decide do i really want to be in this company for the future right they go on to another ikke ekta hari hari gey nattam during the probationary period or after the probationary period ends you are term your employment will be terminated or ended so that is about probationers next one is about temporary employment temporary employment thavakalika sevavak temporary employment means hiring an employee for a contracted temporary period right to fulfill any temporary vacancy thavakalika purappadu piravima sandaha thavakalika purappadu let's say that some permanent employees in a company right are sick there is a long term illness then nectar and then there are some who are on maternity leave okay in sri lanka maternity leave is given for 84 working days 84 working days right that is more than 3 months because it's working days right i think maasa thunakatak wada kalaya maternity leave hamper on uh, for workers usually right so me purak padu me mehem rakiya wet rakiya wat ennati minissu nisa athi wana purak padu piravimana thamai me thavakalika sevakayanwa bandawa ganne temporary employment 
right? What you have to remember about tem temporary employment is that there is no guarantee of job security for these workers. Our maternity leave gear uh, employee, our uh, company get a whole lot temporary employment, te tem temporary worker. Te the temporary worker will have to leave the employment as soon as the vacancy is filled again, right? Let a bitch employee can a whole lot of them. right? You have to go. Why? Your job is temporary. Okay. Usually, this also happens during increases in demands. Look at the last point. If the business undergoes an extensive financial audit, right? Extensive financial audit for like two, three months. A temporary period decatur, the company can hire an accountant. When that audit is over, when that audit is completed, the accountant has to go. Why? The accountant is only a temporary worker. Now, temporary employees are not paid any benefits, any leave or EPF, ETF, ekisima benefit tegak hamba vinnine. Okay. And after that time period, their contract automatically ends or is terminated. So, unfortunately, we can see that temporary employment can be exploited by the employees, employers. Sorry, it can be exploited. Why? They are not given any employee rights or labor rights. Next one. Apprentices, trainees or interns. This is very interesting. Apprentices, trainees or interns. These people are trainees or interns. They are joining the company because they want work experience or they want training or they need knowledge in that field, right? So most of these trainees or interns that you know are either they are still learning. For example, if they are doing a degree or a professional qualification, they are still doing that. They want to have the practical experience or the practical exposure. So they are going to companies to get that practical training and the knowledge. Right? So you can see some of you will start working as trainees or interns in your third and fourth years. What is that? practical experience you have to start working as a trainee or an intern. Trainees, interns or apprentices can't be considered as workmen or employees. Right? Why is that? Because there is no contract of service between, right? This should be corrected. There is no contract of service between an employer and a trainee. Employer and employee, there is no contract of service between an employer and a trainee. Okay. Then why is an apprentice or a trainee there? They are there only to acquire the knowledge, right? And the training and the work experiences. Okay. And because they are not considered as employees of the company, most companies don't pay apprentices trainees or interns. Most companies don't pay these workers. Right? Good up without a gulante podi allowance ekak the harupya panda haka haida haka allowance ekak with right then ne. Kamagi mulika via the transport uh expenses cover karagan makiela they only give an allowance right and they are not workers so obviously they don't have any statutory rights under labor law. Right, Savan in Kam Karuanta, Sevakanta Labena, Mithia Magin Labena Itivasikam, Boko Durata, may apprentices letter, trainees letter, interns letter, ne. Itivasikam, ne. Egolanta Padia Kut, Kimi Venine. What do they do in the company? They perform basic tasks. Hari, Mulika Deval Karama, Podi Lama in the Kam. They only do basic tasks and they get that knowledge and the training. They don't get a salary, a fixed salary. 
So that is the story about interns. So even about lawyers, right? Lawyers that are some may apprentice kina wash ne godakman yala penne. Trainees and interns, mostly accounting firms, auditing firms, eva gin lamai. Right? Lawyers, before they take oath as a lawyer, api adhikarane durum den nakali, we have to undergo a training period of six months. Mega tapi kino apprentice period kela. Right? Eka teva gama tamai. Usavi ka kohoma the vadakirani. Practical training apprentices law apprentices After this training is over only, me training kavasan karat passe tamai passe vitrai during the pulwa. So those are compulsory apprentice periods. So for your degrees also, sometimes there are compulsory training periods, right? Where you have to work. It is compulsory for you to graduate. Make a come You will also receive practical exposure in the work world or in the corporate world. So that is why apprentices, trainees, and interns are also there in companies. Look at the last point. It says some statutes like the Industrial Development Act, EPF Act, have bought in apprentices within the definition of a workman. Apprentices lover, we have definition right? But that doesn't mean that they are given statutory rights, right? Basically, or generally, for these types of uh, employees or for these types of trainees or interns they don't get any statutory rights okay next type is very easy fixed term contract fixed term contract naming makinawa this contract is only for a fixed term for a specific time period term means a time period let's say that there are some specific projects a project take up current let's say a project is funded by the world bank or the asian development bank it is given to uh, a professor right a project is given to a professor to uh, research about poverty in sri lanka lanka ve daridha thave gena research karanna etukote a professor tai yage team ekak tai fixed term contract ekak thinawa let's say it's a 6 month contract then within these six months, they have to carry that research, they have to analyze all the data, and they have to make a report. And may fix term to the professor as well as to the research team. What happens after these six months? After these six months, when this project is over, then the contract is over. Right? The contract comes to an end. Why? It is only there for a specified period of time. After that time is over, it is expired. Usually, fixed term contract is a project that is fixed. Okay. The most important thing to remember under a fixed term contract is after that term is over, contract is in a time period. After the time period that is specified in the contract comes to an end, the contract comes to an end. The employment is over. Usually they are for research projects or software development projects and so on and so forth. Next one, casual employees. Casual employees are very irregular employees. Anityai. Right? They are irregular employees. What does that mean? They don't have any fixed hours of working. Kisima Velaka fixed hours ne. Fixed days ne. Then usually permanent employees have fixed days and hours of working. Monday to Friday, they have to work for five days, usually from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. 5 right? Those are fixed dates and hours of working. 
casual employees don't have any fixed hours or fixed days. Then what do they have? Casual employees are called to work only when work is available, right? They are only called to work when work is available. That means only when their services are needed. Harima irregular. Avilla vadekara gya. They cannot demand work from the employer. The best example you can see these repair work like this. Painting, cleaning, cleaning, right? When their services are needed, their employer calls them and asks, come to work. Right? And then they come and do this job and they go. Have I? They can't come the other day demanding for work. Why? They are only called when work is available. If there is no work, they can't demand work from the employer. Right? Another example is, think about visiting lecturers. Right? Visiting lecturers. Now, visiting lecturers are different. I told you in the beginning of the lecture, there are two types of uh, sectors in work, the government sector and the private sector. Now, let's take a private institution, a private educational institution, which has a visiting lecturer. Who is a visiting lecturer? They are not full-time lecturers. They only come to do guest lectures, right? Ulu semester came, lectures dekakkaran, sitting in our external lecturers. They are called visiting lecturers. Now, a visiting lecturer is a kind of casual employee. They come to do about one, two lectures, right? When they are required to come, they do those lectures and then they go home. They can't come the other day and say, I lectured here yesterday. Why can't they come? They only engage in work when work is available. Their employment is highly irregular. Obviously, because of this reason, they are not permanent employers. They are not permanent employees of the company. Casual employees. Seasonal employment. Seasonal employees. Seasonal employees. You can see the picture itself. They are only employed for a particular season. For a particular season. Now let's take the uh, agriculture industry. Right? Tea, rubber, sugar cane. Tobacco may have a common seasons, you know, maybe not for tea, but rubber, sugar cane, right? Hey, that'll need a car, you know, rubber, kiri cup and a car, you know, may call it what happens in these industries. The demand for workers is increasing, demand for workers is increasing. So, what do they do, right? They have to hire new workers to keep up that down. Industry ke bada karir karan bhai. Let's take another example. Now you know everyone goes for shopping during the New Year and Christmas season. Halu tau rudu kala te, natal kala te, hamoma adi ka lese shopping ya nava. Abi hamoma ekme ya nava. And dum gan de ya nava, kama gan de ya nava, supermarket te kate ya nava, right? We all engage in shopping during these seasons. So what happens here? There is an extensive demand. Adi ka lese indu mati nava. May industries, whether supermarkets or um, apparel sector, right? In uh, clothing shops. So, in these particular shops, there is a high demand. May high demand answer to answer this high demand, what happens? They employ seasonal workers. So, what's the most important thing about seasonal workers? They are only engaged in employment for that particular season. If it is Christmas during the month of December, right? They are only employed to satisfy the demand or to meet that demand during that season. What happens when the season ends? Obviously, their employment also ends. And then you can see in the slide, 
employers are not obliged to re-employ such workers. Right? Let's say that during the 2022 out of the season, I was employed in Candy. Candy Kela Anu Kadiakin, Candy Vala, Mama Vadakara. The last visit again, out of the Kali. Ehema Vadakara Bupaliata, Mama, the last visit to me out of the Kali. Apahu Gana, Vagakima, ne. Part of the to the employer. Right? Out of the Kali, Virunaka Mama, Mama, Bandavagan, Kissima Vagakima, ne. The employer doesn't have any obligation. Right? After the season ends, to take me as a permanent employee. Right? The employer doesn't even have an obligation to take me as a worker for the next hour of the season. Right? I was only employed for that particular season. So that is about seasonal employees. Right. So we have finished the classification of employees. This is our last area. Uh, you don't have to memorize any of these acts. Maybe in uh, your future, in your second and third years, you will know more about these labor laws in Sri Lanka. So what you have to remember is there are over 50 labor laws in Sri Lanka. There are over 50 labor laws in Sri Lanka. What do labor laws do? I told you before, they address the inequality of the bargaining power. Right? That's why they address the inequality between the employer and the employee. So, what is the key purpose of labor law? To secure the employee's rights and well beings. So, you can see that there are different classifications of labor law, right? Labor relations, terms and conditions of employment, health and safety of workmen, social security like EPF, ETF, gratuity, and then laws on the welfare and well-being of employees. I will tell you two important points before this lecture is finished. I will only take a short while. The first important point is that there are many labor laws in Sri Lanka, right? It addresses the bargaining power, right? Inequality between the worker and the employer, right? That is the first point. Second point is labor laws in Sri Lanka, right? Labor laws in Sri Lanka are very favorable towards the employee. Sorry. They are very favorable towards the employee. Right? So, irrespective of whatever is there in the contract of employment, contract of employment is not a Right? May labor laws priority. These labor laws take the priority. That means, if there is a clash between something in the contract of employment, Contract of employment, I told you, when a worker starts to work, they are signing a contract. A contract is not in the contract. It is not in the contract. It is not the contract. If there is a conflict between the law and the contract, the law takes priority. Right? The law takes priority over the contract. Right? The law takes priority. Nithiya maging etsra durate seva kekwa araksha karnava. The law protects the employee. So that is the second important point. And these are the main labor laws of Sri Lanka. Right. So we are done with the lecture. Uh, thank you for listening to the lecture. And uh, if you have any questions, like I told you before, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to clarify it from any of our lecturers. Okay, so thank you for listening to the session and hope you have a great day.